Hello everyone, welcome to the Bulldog Breakdown, heading into week number six of the college football season. Buck Ballou, Hudson Mason, Georgia, and Tennessee this week in Knoxville. Uh, let's, uh, let's break down where Georgia should be in this ranking system right now. Uh, not everybody believes that Georgia's a top four team right now. Where do you see the Bulldogs? Man, um, I think it's first off, it's just tough to put uh, really Georgia and a handful of teams in the top four because I think you can make a case for six or seven teams right now inside the top four. Um, I, I think Georgia, I would have Georgia at number four. Um, they do crack my number four. I think the win against Notre Dame was very impressive. Uh, and and I'm uh, a part of me is an eye test guy too. I'm looking at how teams are playing, when they're hitting their stride, the competition they're playing against. So I think uh, Auburn deserves to be in the top four. I think Alabama deserves to be in the top four, Georgia in the top four, and I'd have Oklahoma in my top four. So obviously all of those teams, it'll iron itself out as the season goes on, but I think those are, to me, a combination of who's playing the best right now and strength of schedule. I don't know why some teams, I know this is the Georgia Bulldog show, so we can't talk Auburn, but I don't know why some people are so reluctant to have Auburn inside their top four with the strength of schedule and the teams they've beaten. Well, everybody's enamored with this LSU passing game. We've never seen LSU throw the ball like they are right now. Yeah. So you can see why people have fallen in love with them. You're an SEC guy. Three teams yeah. in the uh, top four. <laughs> I've got Georgia right on the bubble right now, and I, I would have them fifth this week heading into this Tennessee game. Uh, the only thing to me holding them back, and you've talked about it, mm -hmm. talked about it prior to the season, is Georgia's inability so far to hurt defenses when they load up against our running game. Yep. We saw there were some vertical opportunities down the field against man-to-man -man coverage against Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. uh, George Pickens had a couple of opportunities, not many, yeah. but when he did, he didn't come down with a football. So I think that's the one area that Georgia really needs to focus on is developing that big play threat when teams load up against the running game. Once they do that, they look like a legit college football playoff team to yeah, me. Yeah, they do. And, and I think, Buck, you talk about some of the teams right now. Clemson looks like they have a hole in their, in their, uh, in their armor, I guess what you could say. Georgia has a hole. I mean, there's a lot of teams right now. We thought there'd be one or two, maybe even George, three dominant teams in college football, but Alabama's defense, Clemson this week against UNC, Georgia explosiveness on offense. It seems all of these teams right now have a little bit of a hole that they've got to kind of iron out and fix. And with Georgia, it's, you know, if you get into a game with Alabama, uh, can you outscore Alabama? Because the three receivers that Bama's got right now are three of the best. I think we, you could argue that it, three the trio of receivers that yeah, any team is. Yeah, they're looking pretty I mean, good. They're, they can fly and they can go. So. so Georgia had the off week last week, the bye week. Kirby called it a work week. What do you think they're trying to get accomplished coming out of the Irish game? Well, I think the biggest uh, thing they're trying to accomplish is just get healthy. You know, Cade Mays, Andrew Thomas, a left tackle. I mean, a lot of these guys, even on the defense side yeah, of the ball. Yeah, banged just, up football just, team. Yeah, just banged up. And look, Tennessee had the bye week and Georgia had the bye week as well. But this is a, a just a Tennessee football team right now that doesn't have an identity. They're hearing a lot of negative outside noise. And this is, quite frankly, a Georgia team that should walk into Neyland Stadium. And I, and I understand it's another SEC opponent, but this is not the Tennessee of the past. This isn't your grandpa's Tennessee team of the 90s and the early 2000s. And I think Georgia, uh, getting some guys back more healthy, Buck, they should, they should run the football. I, I kind of see this game being like the game against Vanderbilt, where you just get off the bus and, and Georgia, with the swagger and confidence they have, uh, should be able to kind of step on a, a diminished, less confident Tennessee team and, and beat them pretty handily. Yeah, I really, uh, really believe what Kirby was talking about with the work week. Sure, Georgia was banged up, had some guys that needed the rest and the treatment, the rehab to get ready for this grind through the SEC East in October. But I think the work week reference was to a lot of young football players that need to get coached up. Uh, the Nolan Smiths, the N'Kobe Deans, Jermaine Johnson, uh, guys of that nature needed the work. George Pickens, yeah. the young Dominique Blaylock, yeah. got to polish up their game as we get into SEC play. On the other side, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back, talk about the Volunteers and Bulldogs matchup and what we think about both sides of the ball.
Football Breakdown with Ballou and Mason. So let's look at Georgia-Tennessee in the matchups here. Let's start with the Georgia offense. I think one of the key matchups in this game is Andrew Thomas, the Bulldogs, all SEC left offensive tackle, matched up against Aubrey Solomon, five-star recruit out of South Georgia. Wow. Georgia wanted Michigan. him heavily. Uh, he got away to Michigan, transferred to Tennessee, eligible immediately. You're going to see him matched up on Thomas a little bit in this game. That matchup intrigues me. Georgia needs to win these matchups. I think Thomas will uh, be able to win that one. So uh, Georgia looking to run the football like they always do. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Solomon. He's kind of the, the rare or only bright spot for Tennessee on the defensive line. They're trying to recruit, get better offensive linemen, and just more depth. Will Friend, their offensive line coach, played for him in college. He's a good, good recruiter, just needs a little bit more time. Um, and, you know, I think, again, Georgia, where they have the advantage against a lot of teams, even in the SEC, is the line of scrimmage. So uh, it seems like the same story that we talk about every week. You're going to lean along that offensive line. Hopefully some of them have gotten healthy. But what a big game for a guy like Cade Mays, right? Knoxville kid was committed to Tennessee. Dad played at Tennessee and then switched at the last minute to Georgia. I mean, he knows a lot of those kids on that Tennessee team, so he gets to go back home for the first time and play against uh, some of his buddies in his hometown. I think, you know, maybe he'll get some more playing time than we've seen previously, but I, I think I've got my eye on him this week. Yeah, I'm looking at two things. I'm expecting Coley to go tempo, something Jake Fromm just flourishes doing. So go up tempo, uh, wear down this thin Tennessee defense by keeping them on the field. This is what Fromm does best. It's like a coach on the field getting you in these plays. You know you're going to be successful. You wear down the defense. Hopefully you run more plays and we get to see Zamir White right. and James Cook a little bit yeah. more than we saw the last time out. But again, I'm looking at Cager and Robertson, uh, looking at some of these other receivers. When they do get this man coverage on the outside, we got to start making some plays yeah. there uh, and be a little more dangerous on, on offense. Let's look at the defensive side of the ball here in this game. Uh, Tennessee not divulging, revealing who their quarterback will be. They're giving reps to all three guys this week in practice. So I guess they're playing that card, trying to trick Kirby and his defensive staff, Lanning and Schumann, not really knowing who's going to play quarterback this weekend. Yeah, um, I think to us there's some obscurity, and we may not know, but I, I've got a feeling that with Cheney being at Georgia and them knowing Cheney pretty well, they've based on Cheney's offense, I think Kirby and Landing have a pretty good feel of, uh, you know, is it going to be Garantano? Is it going to be this true freshman quarterback? Mauer. Mauer. I don't yeah. see, you know, Mauer, I saw him play in the Florida game, and, and you know, I know the Vols are 1-3 and three right now, and you could argue why play Garantano's build for the future, but that Mauer kid did not look ready, and he looked kind of mentally overwhelmed. True so, freshman. Yeah, I, I would expect him to go with Garantano, more experience. It is a new system with Cheney, but I think Kirby and Landing have a, have a pretty good feel of who can operate the system better. Uh, of the Tennessee yeah, quarterbacks. The, to me, the skill set looks relatively the same. So it's not like suddenly they're just going to come out and run the ball with a yeah. quarterback all the time. They'll be running the same plays, apparently. I, I'll tell you what I see, Buck, like we saw last year, kind of square peg in a round hole with Justin Fields and Cheney's offense. I see the same thing with Garantano in his offense, and that's always been the knock at Jim Cheney is, okay, you've got a quarterback with a certain skill set, and the offense looks completely different than what he's comfortable doing. So... Uh, I think you'll watch this game this weekend, and a lot of Georgia fans will go, huh, uh, that looks kind of familiar to last year when Cheney was in Georgia with, with uh, Jake Fromm and a, and a dual-threat quarterback. Tennessee's played from behind a lot. They've had issues protecting the quarterback, Garantano. So I'm looking for Georgia's defense, man. Let's turn up this havoc rate. Need to see some of these outside linebackers start to emerge as real threats as we head into October in this SEC East schedule we're going to be facing here. Uh, you got Ojolari, who yeah. Kirby bragged on this week, a three-down linebacker, and that's a good thing. But I need to see Anderson. I need to see Nolan Smith, mm -hmm. Jermaine Johnson. These other guys emerge as real playmakers. And I think some of the guys in the secondary, Tyson Campbell, I mean, all, all those guys who have been playing a lot, your, stu your two safeties, LeCount, they've been playing well, but maybe the one part of Tennessee's offense that doesn't get talked about is the receivers. Jennings, they, they've got some guys out wide. Callaway. And Callaway, I mean, long, big catch radius. I mean, I think this is going to be the biggest challenge if Tennessee's offensive line can hold up long enough for, to allow Garantano to throw the ball vertically. It could be a big test for the Georgia secondary. Yeah, I've almost forgotten what Tyson Campbell looks like. He's yeah. been out 
it seems so long. So these young cornerbacks, DJ Daniel, maybe we'll see Stevenson here. McGee played well, filling in, starting on one side. Stokes reportedly is feeling better with the knees. So we should be able to match up back there in the secondary. Looking for a big Georgia win. I think that's what we're all expecting up in Knoxville, a Bulldog takeover. Have fun watching that one. And join us next week as we're back talking about the Georgia Bulldogs.